Crew, it's time to build my personal favourite FM formation. It's the 4 3 1 2 narrow. How's it going, crew? I hope you're well. So, it's builder tactic time again, and can I tell you something? What I'm finding most interesting and refreshing about this series is the amount of people that now want to build their own tactic, they're not interested in downloading X, Y, Z tactic from all over the place. They want to build their own, and I absolutely love that. Fair play to you. Today, we're going to make my favorite formation. It's a 4 3 1 2, or you can turn it into a diamond, one of those type. Both narrow systems, I absolutely love them. Right, let's get going, crew. So, this is my idea of a 4 3 1 2. Some roles may change here and there, which we're going to go through, but at the end of this video, we want to be coming up with something like this. First step, as always, blank slate down to create your own style right at the bottom. Bosh. And then we choose the formation template we're going to use. We can get pretty close to it on this one, I think. Perfect. And now we have our blank template. And what I like about blank templates is when you click on a player's role, there's no additional PIs involved. You've got a completely blank slate. For example, if I want my central midfielder on defense to press a bit more often, I can do that. If you choose a preset, you will not be able to do that. So if you want a completely blank, clean slate, go to create your own style and start from scratch. Now FM's gave us a simple layout there, simple rules, pretty basic stuff. To be honest, some of them can work quite well, but obviously we're gonna manipulate this like a block of clay. Now the way I like to set up my 4312 or narrow diamond systems are to be really aggressive with the fullbacks. They're going to supply the only width in our team. The only natural width is going to come from them. So we need to get in them in the game. So the roles around that are going to be super, super important. We start with the wing backs, and you'll notice I put wing back, not fullback. Please remember, right? Wing backs were initially invented back in the day when they first came onto the scene to be the only player down that side. They would go up and down dominating that flank. As times have changed and we've got more aggressive in FM, we tend to use them with inside forwards or inverted wingers ahead of us. But they are ideally set to play down there by themselves and that's what we'll do. One last thing, I'm not going to use a complete wing back and this is why. The complete wing back is a bit of a hybrid, which you can see on my video about wing backs, the know your roles. It's a bit of a hybrid of the inverted wing back and the wing back. Meaning, yes, it'll get really high up on attack, definitely, but occasionally he will drift around as well. We need the, our wing backs to maintain the width for this system to work. You kind of need to think of your wing back as a winger. So look for those attributes that you would look for in a winger because he is your only man on the outside there. Obviously, we do need the defensive responsibilities as well, so them attributes will come into it, but we are looking for them to supply most of the attacking threat out wide. So we need to bear that in mind when selecting a player. For example, in my inter team, I use Federico Di Marco, and you can see on his little player position map there, he can play anywhere down the left, and his attributes going forward like a winger, the crossing, the dribbling, the decent pace, the flair, they're all there, but he's also got some handy defensive attributes as well. So you need to bear that in mind. Two central defenders. Now, if you're going to use a ball playing defender, just be wary of what your role in front is going to be. So if we're going to use a deep line playmaker, I'm not going to use a ball playing defender because I want a deep line playmaker to make those passes, not the defender. I want my central defenders keeping it short. And to do that, a blank canvas is ideal because we'll just click on the central defender, go up here, and make sure we want to short a pass in and taking fewer risks. So his priority is to give the ball to the more creative players. And that leads us nicely onto the midfield three. So I'm not going to have a ball playing defender because I want my midfield middleman to be a deep line playmaker and he's going to be on defend duty because in this formation i need one player one player to hold his position now as you can see he's hard coded to hold his position the deep line playmaker if you're going to use a ball playing defender and you don't want to use a deep line playmaker the alternative is to use a central midfielder on defense you basically just need one player who's going to hold his position ball winning midfielders remember will go hunting for the ball even on defend duty so i like to use one of the two dlp on defend or central midfielder on defend and if you prefer to use a diamond formation it transitions even nicer because your deep line playmaker can just sit there right in front of your two center backs depending which way you want to go i'm going for the flat three so then you've got the two guys either side of your holding midfield player what are you going to ask them to do you're going to have a couple of choices here 
This might depend on how strong your wingbacks are. Do you think your wingbacks are good enough to operate down the flanks by themselves? Or would you like them to have a bit of support from your central midfielders? So I think you've got a couple of options here. You can either choose central midfielders who are going to link up with your wingback. So if you think of your wingback, when he's on the ball and you're quite an aggressive team, he's going to be more like here and here. So what do you want this guy to do? Do you want him to hold back in case this guy gets exposed? You can do that in a more defensive formation. Maybe you're away from home. You can hold him back a bit. Or do you want him to affect the game combined with that wing back? If you want him to combine with that wing back, there's no better role than a Mazala. Your Mazala will pop into these holes, the gaps there. So when your wing back gets forward, look to overlap perhaps, you've got a nice little combination play there. That's one option. That's your more aggressive option. Your other option is to ask this central midfielder to cover your wing back when he's going forward. The options there, you can again have a central midfielder on defence, so he's going to hold his position. Or a really nice role is a Carolero. Carolero, Calero, you get the gist. I like to think of it as like a less aggressive Mazala. Your Mazala into them spaces. Your Carolero into these spaces. So he's going to provide a bit of cover. Again, it's entirely up to you how your team are playing, but you've got a couple of options there. Of course, you could potentially start the game aggressive with your Mazala, combine them for overloads with your wing back, and then when you get the lead or you're a bit under the cosh, you're trying to hold on to a lead, you can flip that Mazala to a Carolero. That's one option down one side. Other options down the other side. And to be honest, and like I did with Inter, this is the way I like to go. I like to do hedge my bets if you like. One side I will have a Mazala combining with that wing back, overloads on one side, but I don't want to go for overloads on both sides because we need to focus our play. If we're trying to do both things at once, it's not really going to work. So what do I do with this man? So I've got my wing back on attack, bombing up and down there. This side I've got my wing back bombing up and down with support from the Mazala. This man is going to be a bit of an all-rounder. So bear in mind, we've only got the one player holding his position, so we need someone next to him to help out as well, but who can also contribute up front and potentially help the wing back out as well. That's why I really like using a box-to-box -box midfielder. Your alternative to this is a central midfielder on support, possibly a ball-winning midfielder on support who does get high up as well. Now, in a narrow formation, you do need better movement from your midfield three, so I will always go to the PIs for this box-to-box -box midfielder, and I'll ask him to move into channels. As you can see, the game tells you what that affects. He's going to find spaces in between the centre backs and the full backs. When we're looking at the game, so he's going to be in and around that sort of position there. So if he's in and around this sort of position there occasionally, not as often as Masala, but occasionally, your wing back's going to have a few options. He's also going to drag opposition defenders to follow him. But when he loses the ball, he's got more of a defensive eye than the Mazala to get back in position and help your DLP. That's why a box-to-box -box midfielder for me is a good all-round role. Alternatives are, like I said, ball and midfielder on support. He can do a lot of similar things, including staying wider so he can go down in that channel. So what I'm looking for from that midfield three is one holding player, one player to definitely back up one of the wing backs, probably the stronger wing back, and the other one is a bit of an all-rounder, up and down, up and down, working hard, back and both up. Now that to me is a pretty solid midfield with nice flexibility, nice movement and good options out wide from the wing backs. What about the boys up front including the number 10 position? I want you to consider your number 10 position as quite flexible depending on your opposition. Now I absolutely love, love using a shadow striker in there, especially behind two strikers that move a bit because they're going to make a bit of room for him to dart into. But if we're not seeing a lot of the ball and we're struggling for the ball, I quite like nudging him back to an attacking midfielder. You'll see the change in his start position when I press this. Drops back a bit. Or an advanced playmaker. Don't be scared to play two playmakers in a team either. Especially when one is far more advanced than the other. Your deep line playmaker will sit back. Ping the balls deeper. Whereas your advanced playmaker will play little through balls to your strikers and overlapping players. So they're different roles completely. This is entirely up to you what sort of role you want to put in here. And what you want him to do. If you want him to be a goal threat, searching for goals and capitalising on movement from strikers, highly recommended then is a shadow striker who will do just that. But if you're looking to break a team down, you're struggling to get the ball perhaps, I'd love you to drop him into an advanced playmaker role and see what sort of damage that can do. Also, probably the biggest blank canvas of a role in this position is your attacking midfielder. You can see there, no player instructions. So you can mould him to do what you want. Take advantage of his positive attributes. If, you, if he's a killer at shooting, get him shooting more often because in that position there, you're going to get quite a lot of opportunities to shoot. So get him pinging it. So it's all about being open-minded in that number 10 position. 
a player that can comfortably do a couple of different roles would be absolutely ideal. And to be honest, if they can play the number 10 position, they can probably play playmaker, shadow striker, attacking midfielder. So you can adapt that depending on the game flow. Up front, right? Up front, you've got two roles, which is why we love this formation, because a lot of formations these days, you've got one up front. This bad boy gives you two. Goal threat all over the place. So then you need to think about combinations, combination of forwards that will work well together. A lot of people will use a double advanced forward. I've got no issue with that because your advanced forward will run the channels and in a formation that's narrow, I definitely, definitely recommend having at least one because they will pull wide as well, dragging the centre-backs, giving the full-backs something to think about so that opposition full-backs can't get too cocky thinking they're not marking anyone. An advanced forward will pull wide, so I do recommend you do have an advanced forward. Now, in a setup like my midfield, you need to think about how the forwards and midfield are going to link up. So if I've got my Mazala linking up here with my wing back, do I need my advanced forward coming over there as well? Probably not. So I'm going to stick my advanced forward on the other side so he can provide a bit of width, a bit of threat out there. Whereas there's not Mazala, there's a box-to-box -box midfielder instead. Now, that's not saying an advanced forward can't work for a Mazala. Of course it can. Your Mazala is off, so going to be in there as well. He's not going to hang around here all the time. Just my personal preference. It's up to you to experiment and see what works for you. Now, in FM this year, I've been really enjoying link-up strikers. My idea of a link-up striker is a false nine, a target forward, or a deep line forward. Any of these roles on support will mean that your striker will just drop off a little bit. So, dropping off will give a bit more space to your man in the number 10 position especially if he's on Shadow Striker or attacking midfield, he'll have more gaps to run into. So a striker on support may drag a centre-back away with them, leaving a bit of space. What it'll also do is it also means he's available for the ball to feet. So in this formation, you can drop into these areas there, combine with your Mazala to potentially leave that area completely free for your wing-back to exploit. Which, if you look at my inter-tactic, is the way we've gone with that. We've got Mazala, wing-back and a target forward. Basically means you've got movement up there, movement. I don't like to use a poacher unless, unless we are totally dominant and we're camped in the opposition half. A poacher will then sit in that box. Think of him as 18 yard. He won't come out of there. He just looks to finish off chances. But until we are totally dominant, I want two striker movements that are moving. Your advance forward will move side to side, pressure on the opposition defence. And a drop off forward will do just that. It'll drop off, look for little balls to play through. One last thing on the strikers, your partner striker to your advanced forward, if you are dominating and your opposition are camping in their half, they just want to draw. Potentially you can move it to double advanced forward. Or, like I've done there, get your drop off forward onto an advanced duty, so it's a little bit higher up, putting a bit more pressure on the opposition back line. So what you've built there is a nice balanced formation. I always go on about balance and that's what we've got there. You've got to make it make sense. You don't want too many players in the same positions. You need movement for other players. This should be, should be one of the most fluid, nice to watch systems that you can build. Next, you've got to think about your team instructions. And if you're playing a team like this, a shape like this, you've got to be a good team. So we want to be on the front foot. I like to play positive or attacking. I play attacking with Inter, but bear in mind the stature of that team. They are superb, so positive is not a bad way to go first up. This is going to promote a nice passing game, and with this system, we want passing. Pass and move, finding space for our wing-backs to exploit. So to promote this, we will go with shorter passing, and we'll go with play out of defence as well. We don't want to aimlessly hoof the ball long. Also, I want my more creative players to be a bit more expressive. There is some people that will say this means all of your players suddenly become more expressive. For me, I don't see that, but just keep an eye on your players. If you find your central defenders suddenly start trying big hoops up front, just take it off for me, though it's a good option. Now, focus play. This is interesting. I like to keep this off until I start the game, although sometimes I will start with focus play through the middle because, after all, think of my midfield four. They're all really narrow, so I'll have it on focus play through the middle. If we start to dominate and there's gaps appearing on that left hand side where I've got my wing back and my Mazala, not scared at all to focus play down that side, which basically means all the players will shift across ever so slightly. I then like to jump to out possession like I've done in past videos just to set the way your team are going to play. Now we're playing 4 3 1 2, we're aggressive, so yes, I'm going to back my defenders to get involved in the game. Remember, a higher defensive line will mean your wing backs will start that little bit higher. If I have a standard or a lower line, Look where my wing backs are starting. We need them to get into the game. 
I will start with higher or even much higher defensive line at home to get them wing backs in the game as fast as possible. We want to win the ball back fast, so we're going to go with higher or even much higher line of engagement, preventing that short goalkeeper distribution so they're forced to pump it up long. We'll start the game with a higher trigger press. Once we start to tire or we get the lead, we'll knock this down to more often or even slightly more often. And to promote the aggressive style of play, we're going to get stuck in because we want to win that ball back and we're going to back our players in defence by using the offside trap. If your players aren't as good back there mentally, take that off. Now I've established my aggressive style of play thanks to the out of possession instructions, I can transfer that across to the in transition instructions as well and it's 100% a case of counter press and counter because we're trying to win the ball back straight away and get back on the attack. Distribution wise, it depends on your keeper. If you've got a good keeper who's got good distribution, I've tended to leave it, leave him, let it go. Extreme example, Edison, he can ping the ball anywhere so I'm not going to tell him where to put it. If my keeper's slightly poor, I'll tell him just to give to the centre backs. If I'm playing that diamond formation, so the chap in the middle there dropping a bit deeper, I'll get him to get it to the playmaker. What we have there is a proper, solid, positive, narrow formation that will provide some lovely attacking football. Just make sure you've got a good team that's technically able to do this. Because you are going to get left exposed at the back, so we are presuming you're going to try and dominate games. And that's it folks, that's your 4-3-1-2. You can obviously easily adapt that to a diamond by dropping that central midfielder back. And you saw in them clips there, Dumfries and DeMarco, the wing backs, basically playing like wingers and being responsible for five goals. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. There'll be some more of these builder tactics coming soon. I think I'm running out now, we've covered quite a lot, but if you've got any that weren't covered, bang them down below. That's just the two of